Welcome back to part two of lecture five. In this part, little p segment, we want to look at the existence of solutions. So recall the existence question that we talked about on the first lecture. When does a system of linear equations have a solution? Now, based upon what we just saw on the previous uh, part, we saw that this is equivalent to asking when does ax equal to b have a solution? Now, we already actually have a partial answer to this question. Right? We know that ax equal to b has a solution if and only if, if there exists x1 through xn, such that b can be written as a linear combination of, of the columns. So you just, and we have a procedure in whether to find a solution where you can use the Gaussian elimination to check to see if you have a solution. Now, here's a harder question. So the harder question is, when does ax equal to b have a solution for all vectors b in Rm? Can we actually answer this question? So if I give you a matrix, and then I I'm asking you, can you is this matrix chosen such that no matter what value of B I give you, can I always find a solution? So this is, as you can imagine, maybe a little bit of a harder question. So just to kind of illustrate what could happen here, let's move to the following example. Here I have a matrix, 1, 2, 3, 2, 8, 14, and 1, 3, 5. And I have an arbitrary vector, b1, b2, and b3. And so the question is, does this have a solution for all possible values of b1, b2, and b3? So how can one tackle this one, this particular problem? Well, we would want to treat this as basically a system of linear equations, but we're just not sure what each of the equations are equal to. Okay, so one way to think about this particular problem is we want to row reduce the augmented matrix for AX equals B. Okay, so based upon what we saw in the first part of the lecture, we have a particular uh, equation which can be changed into a system of linear equations, and the system of linear equations has an augmented matrix. So in our particular example here, we're really looking at a system of linear equations that looks like this. In the first row, I have 1, 2, 3, B1. In the second row, I have 2, 18, 14, and B2. And then I have 1, 3, 5, and B3. So that's my system of equations. It's my augmented matrix. Now, I don't know what the B1, B2, or B3 are. I just want them to be arbitrary. And I want to see if I row reduce the matrix, whether I get any restriction on what B1, B2, and B3 could be. So I carry through my row reduction algorithm, or the Gaussian elimination, and I just treat the numbers B1 through B3 I, 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 as numbers, and I keep track of what they are as I'm doing my row, elementary row operations, right? So normally I would get rid of this one using the first row, right? So I would have 1, 2, 3, B1, 2, 8, 14, B2. And normally I would multiply the first row and add it to the last row. So I get, uh, sorry, multiply the first row by minus one and add it to the last row. Let's, so I get minus two, let's see, one, minus three plus five is two, and minus B1, so I have B3 minus B1. Okay, so you see how I'm keeping track of what would happen as I'm doing the, uh, as I'm doing the elementary row operations. And now let's get rid of this two. So I would multiply the first row by minus two and add it to the second row. So I'd have zero, four, eight, B3, six, zero, one, two, minus two, B1, zero, one, two, B3, minus B1. And I'll do one more row operation. I want to uh, kill this particular guy right there. Um, so this is going to be equivalent to 
1, 2, 3, B1, 0, 4, 8, B2, minus 2, B1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this row by minus 1 fourth and add it to this row, right? So I will have 0, 0, 0. And then I'll have B3 minus B1 minus 1 fourth B2 to B1. Okay, now, so I get this system of equations, and we know that, since this is the augmented matrix, that this will have a solution if and only if this part here is zero. If this part is not zero, this particular last entry is not zero, then we're getting a pivot in the last column, which prevents us from having a solution. So let's just give ourselves a little bit more room, and we can write all of this out. So the the matrix is consistent. So remember, that means that there's a solution if and only if this expression right here, B3 minus B1 minus 1 fourth B2 minus 2B1 uh, equals 0. Okay? And you can clean this up a little bit. All right? So let, let me just clean this up. So minus one half B one um, minus one fourth B two plus B three equals zero. Okay, but now you can see obviously that if if you took a B one of B two and a B three that did not satisfy this equation, then your original system will have no solution. Okay, so let's make a a note of that. So note if the original B happen to be 1, 1, 1, then minus 1 half minus 1 fourth plus 1 does not equal 0. So Ax equals B has no solution. Okay. So it's not consistent for all solutions. So what we're seeing here, going just a quick recap here, is we're asking the question, when does Ax equals uh, B have a solution for all B? And we see that in some cases, if we just kind of make our, uh, represent what the Bs could be by kind of variables and keep track of what's happening, there could be cases where we may not be able to find a solution. In the next part of the lecture, we'll kind of give you a theorem that kind of tells you exactly when Ax equals B has a solution for all B in Rm.